Hi, Elizabeth. How are you doing today? I'm all right. How things been going since the last time we met? It's about the same. I'm still feeling pretty down. I mean, I just I feel really stuck and not happy, and I just don't know why. Okay, so there's a few things going on there. You said you're feeling stuck, mm -hmm. um, not happy, and sound sound like you're a little confused as to what's going on, what's causing it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any suspicions about what might be causing it? I mean, I've been feeling like really isolated lately. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm a stay-at-home mom, it's hard. There's not a lot of people, you know, right at my fingertips to, mm -hmm. to spend my time with. You know, obviously my family, but... Um, so, I guess, you know, I, I kind of... I had some friends in the neighborhood but like our friendships just kind of fizzled out um, and I ever since then it, it's just like I don't really feel like doing much I just kind of feel like what's the point and let my husband take care of a lot of stuff you know I used to you know shop for the groceries all the time and make sure the house is always stocked and make dinner every night and get the kids ready for school in the morning and I still do that stuff but a lot of times you know, I let it slide. Sometimes I won't make dinner or whatever, and when I do do it, I just feel like I'm forcing myself to do it. it the passion is gone. And how long have you been, you say housewife, right? Mm -hmm. um, how long have you been a housewife? Um, for a long time. I have two boys. They're eight and ten, and I've been staying home since my first one was born, so ten years. and. You know, it's it's been really rewarding for me. I'm not really interested in going back to work or anything like mm -hmm. that, because um, I know people always say you're you know you're feeling um, unfulfilled, like you should go back to work. But it's not. It you know I've felt happy with it for so long. I don't think that it's being home. I think it's something inside of me. Something's changed. Yeah. So for a long time. You were satisfied being a housewife. Mm -hmm. You enjoyed that life or yeah. found satisfaction in that life. And somewhere along the line, something changed in you. Mm -hmm. And now you're not happy with it. Yeah. So what it represents in terms of activities, like caring for your children and shopping, now that's really changed. Yeah, exactly. Well, I guess, you know, my youngest is eight, so he's only been in school for a couple of years. So I guess like it, it's not super recent, but recently he, he, I finally have no children in the home. So it's more, it's more time to myself. And I kind of filled that gap a little bit with other things. Like I did Cub Scouts with the boys for a while. And um, like I said, I had some friends around the neighborhood. So that kind of like filled that time. But now that stuff, it's just not really happening anymore. So now I kind of feel like it's not it's not boredom you know it's not like I don't have enough to do it's like I don't want to do anything but then at the same time I feel frustrated because there's nothing to do all right so you're you're frustrated with your situation maybe with yourself a little bit yeah I think a lot more with myself because I know that I would feel better if I you know maybe found more friends or, or found something to do with my time, but I don't want to at the same time. So I'm frustrated with myself because I, kn I kind of know what would help, but then I don't really have the, um, like, the volition to do it. You're not motivated. Yeah, I'm not motivated. Have you received any feedback uh, from other people about this, meaning has anyone else noticed that you're down? Yeah, I mean, obviously my husband has noticed because he has to get the boys ready in the morning. Um, he's really supportive. I know he can tell that I'm not feeling the same, but, you know, he works, and then he has to come home and, and pick up my slack, so he's getting frustrated, which I understand. And, you know, my mom has said to me that, you know, she thinks I'm not doing as much, and so it kind of hurts. It feels like everybody's trying to tell me I'm lazy and that I'm not doing enough. And it's always that, like, feeling, you know, like nobody really understands how much work goes into being a mother. But then at the same time, now that I'm doing less and less, I feel like 
they're all right, you know, I am lazy, I'm not doing anything. Did they use the word lazy? No, not, not that I can remember. I, you know, I think my mom said, like, you're not doing as much as, as you used to. And I kind of took offense to that. Even though it's kind of true, it's like, I don't know. It hurt. Okay, that was painful for you. What about what your husband said? What's he been saying? You know, I think at first we didn't really acknowledge it. It was like, you know, I took a break here, he picked up the slack and it was fine, but now that it's been more and more, he's kind of getting frustrated and, and you know, he's been asking me about how I feel and, and why I'm not doing as much, but at the same time, like, even though he knows that I'm not motivated, it's still frustrating because I, it's my responsibility. So I think he's, you know, he's been saying, um, like, I need you to, to do more around the house. Pretty much is what he said, I need you to do more. What was your response to that when he said, I need you to do more? I started crying because I know he's right, and that's what I tell myself every day. I need to do more, but I don't have the motivation to do it, and so I'm so frustrated with myself. And, you know, I know that he needs that from me, and I don't know why I'm not motivated to do it. Okay, so you're frustrated for feeling down. Yeah. And you're frustrated for lacking motivation. Mm -hmm. And just as little as a few years ago, you didn't feel it this way at all. Yeah. Yeah, I actually think, you know, I've been feeling this way more like in the past like six months or something like that. Like I, it was hard for me when my, my youngest son went to school, but more in like the natural way that it is hard. Mm -hmm. um, but this is something else. This is more consuming. It's, you know, like the difficulty of him going away to school almost was motivating. Like it was hard, but at the same time it was freeing because I had other opportunities to do stuff. Mm -hmm. This is just like um, stunting. Okay. So let me shift gears a little bit. Um, can you tell me about your, well, a recent day? So it's kind of typical of what you're telling me now, meaning not motivated, down. Sure. Um, on Wednesday, I was having a really hard time getting out of bed, so my husband just got the kids ready in the morning, and I felt really bad about that, so I just stayed in bed uh, for a couple more hours, probably until like 10.30. Um, and I got up, you know, and made myself something to eat and then I thought you know I should probably go to the store because we're almost out of milk and you know and I think the boys need shampoo but I just I just sat down and I just sat there and I think I sat for I don't even know how long um, the boys came home from school it was like you know 3.30 and I hadn't even gotten up and so then I said okay the boys are home I should probably get started on dinner soon because my husband will be home soon and uh, I found I found something in the fridge to make and I made dinner and um, you know after that everybody you know just sat down we just watched TV and I just sat there until it was time to go to bed All right. and this was you said this was recently right mm -hmm. What would the ideal day have looked like? Take that same day and do what you wish you could have done. Mm -hmm. I wish that I would wake up and, you know, I would want to wake up um, when it was time for the kids to get ready to school, to go to school. Um, you know, I could make sure that everything, that they had everything they needed. I could pack their lunches and um, get the boys dressed and you know, check if they needed any permission slip sign, that kind of thing. Um, 
send them out the door and then I, I would see if we needed anything from the store. Um, I'd probably do a little bit of cleaning around the house. Um, I used to like have um, like a list of chores that like I would do different things on different days and different days of the month and stuff. So like bedding would get washed one day of the week and that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I would probably like follow that list. Um, nowadays I just, you know, if it gets done, it gets done. And usually my husband helps me with some of the stuff and, and it, you know, I would do the bathrooms one day a week. That probably gets done like once a month now. But um, I would do that, so do the cleaning. If we, if I needed to go to the store, I would do that. Um, I'd get ready for the boys to come home. I'd probably make them a snack and, and figure out what was going to be for dinner. I would go ahead and do that, and then probably, um, you know, sometimes we we would watch TV after my husband got home after dinner, or I would um, figure out something for us to do. We could play a board game or all watch a movie as a family or something like that. And um, But that would be after the kids did their homework and everything like that and then after we spent some time together I'd put them to bed. Alright, so there's a fairly wide discrepancy between where you are in terms of behavior, right? Mm -hmm. And and where you want to be. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me ask you a very specific question about one of the first things in the day. You had mentioned that uh, when it was time to get up, right? Uh, you didn't. Mm -hmm. So you were awake and aware of it, but then you went back to sleep, I presume. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, your husband got up and he, he took care of things, right? How did you feel allowing that to happen? Because clearly, that's not what you wanted to happen. How did you feel about uh, that Awful. oversleeping? It's just like you know, the alarm goes off, and I know it's time to get up, and. My husband's getting out of bed, and I just look at the clock, and I think, what's the point? And, you know, it's just this instant feeling of, I can't even describe it, like, pointlessness of getting up. And so I go back to sleep, but I, I feel worse for doing it, you know? Like, it's a catch-22. Like, it, I don't want to wake up. I just I don't want to. But then when I go back to sleep, I feel bad. I feel guilty. Okay. So by not getting up in the time you wanted, you feel guilty. And, but you also mentioned something that you thought, mm -hmm. which was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you said, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Can you expand on that? It just... It's just like... You know, when I'm sleeping, I don't realize how sad I am. And I don't realize how hard it is to function. When I'm sleeping, I'm not aware of that. And as soon as I wake up, I am. And so I just have this feeling of, like, what's the point of getting up and experiencing okay. these feelings when I could go back to sleep and not have to? What's the point of getting up when sleeping will keep the pain at bay? Yes, yeah. Okay. But then, when you when you do get up, mm -hmm. you feel sad and guilty about uh, having overslept. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So really, functionally, what you're doing is you're delaying experiencing the pain. Yeah. Uh, and then, in terms of how it affects your relationships and your family. You're not getting your kids off to school. Your husband's getting mm -hmm. a little frustrated. Yeah. Uh, and all you've really bought yourself is a couple extra hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, presumably without, without pain because you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. But you're not really escaping it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Before, when you felt more satisfaction and purpose, did you get up and, and help the kids off to school? Yeah, it was so easy. I would just like, you know, I would wake up and and I would be like, okay, it's time to get up and get out of bed and, and get ready to go. I mean, you know, sometimes if if, um, if if I was a little bit tired, it would be a little bit hard. But, you know, it's not, you know, as a stay-at-home mom, I usually get enough sleep for the most part now that the kids are older and everything. So mm -hmm. it's not usually too hard. 
to get up and I would, I would, you know, it would be another good day, you know, I would be glad to get up and take care of the things that I needed to take care of and I felt accomplished. All right, so maybe what's going on here, or maybe, maybe we could help. You remember, you know, over the last few sessions we've talked about cognitive behavioral therapy and the different mm -hmm. um, techniques that I'll be using and different things we're talking about. Sometimes with behavior, uh, the behavior that's useful, which in this case I'm assuming we can agree is the, the getting up on time. Mm -hmm. uh, the behavior that's useful has to come first, even if the feeling doesn't match. Mm -hmm. Right? So sleeping those extra, I presume, you know, a couple hours uh, delays you from feeling sad and it causes other problems. Mm -hmm. If you were to get up one time, you might still feel sad, right? Because you know, that's why you're over sleeping, because you're sleeping longer to avoid that. But the functional part of being a housewife, mm -hmm. as you identify, would be completed. Mm -hmm. So maybe some of those feelings of sadness and guilt would, over time, abate, because functionally speaking, you're completing the tasks that you want. Mm -hmm. What's tough about that is that in the moment, it's easy for me to say this now, right? uh, but in the moment, like for instance, when you have to get up out of bed tomorrow, mm -hmm. you're going to be facing that same challenge, which is I, I can get up now and feel depressed, mm -hmm. or I can wait and feel depressed later. So in that moment, it's hard to act on the behavior that you kind of know you want to move toward. I mean, it sounds like you want to get up and see yeah, the kids. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I want everything to be normal again. And I guess I never really thought of it like that. Like, I just thought, well, if I'm waking up at the right time and I'm just feeling bad, then, like, like I said, what's the point? But I guess it makes sense, like, even if I don't feel like doing it, Maybe it'll make me feel better if I do do it, even if it's hard, because nothing's really harder than what I'm already going through. Well, it seems like you're you're more or less making things worse, right? In an effort to avoid the pain mm -hmm. that you're going to suffer anyway, mm -hmm. you're making the pain worse and just delaying it a little bit, right? Uh, what what thought? I mean, we we talked before about automatic thoughts, these mm -hmm. thoughts that come up, kind of. Um, when your belief system meets these different situations that occur. When you have that thought that this is pointless, mm -hmm. right? And, and I'm going to expand on that thought a little and say that you know, what that thought's really getting at is um, I can avoid this pain if I sleep a little while longer. Mm -hmm. right? That's a version of the thought. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, and also I guess I thought that um, no, it wouldn't really be that beneficial to get up. Okay. So you're also minimizing the benefit of yeah. So there's a couple things going on, right? I can avoid the pain mm -hmm. right, by sleeping in, and there's really no point to, to getting up because I won't do any good anyway. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, what adaptive response, you know, that self-talk we talked about, those things we, we consciously think to ourselves, could you apply in that moment when you're, you know, whatever time you get up in the morning when you're thinking about this and that thought comes in that... Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter if I get up anyway. I mean, I guess I could tell myself, like, I can do this. Like, instead of, you know, when I say to myself, what's the point? Instead, I can say, I can do this. I can get out of bed. It'll be okay. I can, I'm strong enough, even though it's hard, to push through the pain and get up now. Even though I don't want to, I can say I can do this. Okay. So that would be your adaptive response. I'm strong enough. I can get through this, but it will be difficult. Mm -hmm. right. How about the value of getting up early and seeing the kids off to school? Uh, the automatic thought right now is telling you that's not valuable. But I think that you believe it is valuable. Yeah, I mean, I know it's valuable. I guess what my frustration is is that I know it's valuable and it used to give me like an emotional payoff of like pride and and satisfaction and now I'm not getting that anymore. So I guess I need to realize that even though I'm not getting it right now, if I keep trying maybe it will happen again because it did happen before. 
Well, it would seem logical that you have a higher probability of getting that back if you do get up than if you I guess that's true. Yeah. In, right? I so will never get the satisfaction of sending my kids off to school if I never send my kids off to school. Right. So you have a zero percent chance mm -hmm. of successful, uh, successfully moving past this with a sleeping in, mm -hmm. and you have some other probability greater than zero if you, if you do. Yeah. Right? I never thought about it like that. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So even though getting up early is going to be painful and going to seem like not a practical move, uh, logically you know that it has a better chance of paying off for you. Mm -hmm. And I think that with, with these type of, um, and what, you're, what you're going through is probably you know, depression. Mm -hmm. right? and I would, I'd like to talk to you further to, uh, to make sure that's what's going on, but it seems like you're depressed. And sometimes with depression you just have to uh, get one thing going your way each day, right? So, so I'm not saying necessarily tomorrow you have to get up one time and then go make new friends and then go find social activities, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you don't have to um, you know, build Rome in a day here, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's more like, can I do this one thing? Mm -hmm. Can I prove to myself just what I'm saying, which is I'm strong enough to get up, see the kids off, and have that one victory mm -hmm. for tomorrow? Right, and build on that. Yeah. Yeah. And part of that's going to be playing those adaptive responses back, right? Thinking of those thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's just thinking them, you know, in your mind or actually thinking them and saying them. Sometimes it's helpful just to say them out loud. Yeah, and not letting the negative thoughts take over because that's what I'm thinking like, okay, I can get the kids off to school, but after that I'm going to start thinking, you know, what's the point again? Like, what? Why don't I just sit down? There's no point. So if I can keep reminding myself that I just have to try and that I did accomplish something, and then, you know, even though it's hard and I know that those thoughts are going to come back and that I'm going to feel bad, if I don't do anything, I'm not going to feel any better. So you have a good handle on the adaptive responses, it sounds like, right? Mm -hmm. And you know what you have to, or I don't say have to, but you know what you want to do. Yeah. I'll see you again in a week, mm -hmm. and there'll be five days in there, you know, between now and when I see you again, where you'll have to decide whether you want to get up and see your kids off to school or not, right? Mm -hmm. So I want you to give that a try, the adaptive responses and trying to push through with that behavior. Now, it's important to keep in mind that we have five days between now and when I see you again, you know, five business days, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. School days. Yeah. You may not succeed every day in this. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, sometimes the, the setbacks, like you could, you could get up early two days in a row and then you got a setback that third day. Don't let that wash away uh, those successes. Yeah. Right? It's a day-by-day -day fight. Try not to think of it in terms of the week. I want you to try to think of it in terms of what do I have to do today? Mm -hmm. right, not worrying about the future and not worrying about what you've done in the past. Okay. Right, the only moment we really can live in is now. Mm -hmm. So try to stay present in the moment, recite those adaptive responses, and, and try to push for that just that one victory. Mm -hmm. Can you try that? Yeah, I think I can try that. Alright. So work on that and continue with the homework, uh, the CBT homework I've been giving you, and I'll see you next week. All right, thank you. All right, thanks.